video, I guess, will be mostly harvesting. It's early September, um, September 6th today, I guess, when I'm starting to film this. This is a look at the plums. Uh, they're looking ripe, but they're not. They, they're a small purple plum, but uh, they're not quite ripe yet. They're still quite firm. I suspect, well, no, I, I think they were roughly this same time last year before they before they ripened, so I don't think the, the dry weather has had that much of an effect on them. They might be a bit on the small side because we've had no moisture. But it's a foggy morning, but we're still not getting any rain. Um, the remnants of Hurricane Hermie, Hermine, or I don't know how they pronounce it, but the hurricane that's been down in the southern United States is going to come up past us, but it's going to be east and well out to sea, and the forecast has a millimeter or two of rain. Well, probably accumulate that much on a foggy day. Well, this is the squash and uh, sunflower patch that looked so nice in the last garden update. But we've had no frost or anything, and I try to keep this watered, but it's just starting its natural decline. I've always maintained that a lot of garden plants, it isn't frost, well frost kills them eventually, but it isn't frost that starts the decline, it's the shortening of the days. And our days are getting shorter here now, so they don't have enough sunlight to uh, produce enough chlorophyll to keep the large leaves alive, and so they start dying back. I'll give you a look at the cocoots. I'm finally getting cocoots, or Serpent de Sicilia. Um, the, um, chili, no, Sicilian, I want to say chili, Sicilian um, squash. I'm not sure if it's a summer squash or a winter storage squash. I've never grown it before, but I'm convinced that this is not the climate for it anyway. It's September before I started to see the first squash forming. I found two of the cocoots that are getting fairly large, and it's hard to say how many might be hidden in here somewhere. The vines have gone everywhere, but I'll try to raise one up to give you a look at it. Maybe you can see the one in behind it, too, when I do this. Let's see. It was up in a tree, and it got so heavy. This, this is the uh, hazel tree that it was has attached itself to, but it's hauled that branch down to the ground. Mm, that's got to be getting close to two feet long, I guess. And I guess they can be quite large. But again, I have no idea. That's green, obviously, not ready to eat yet. But if it's one you can store, or if you have to eat it fresh, or I'll have to go online and check some recipes for cagoots, I guess. The Hokkaido pumpkins, or red curry squash, have really gone a nice orange since I picked them, and they've been sitting in the sun, except for one, that small one there. Um, I don't know, that's also one that got hit by whatever it is. Um, and I'm tending to go with somebody's explanation that said a, it's a beetle or a squash beetle or a squash bug or something. Um, I have opened up and eaten, or I'm in the process of trying to eat it all, one of the North Georgia candy roaster squash. That's those two long sort of beige colored ones that you see there. Many more of those in the garden here in various stages of development. But I picked three of them, two of which had that damage on them with the jelly-like stuff coming out of it. So I was wondering if there was some kind of a creature living inside the squash. I cut a big one and uh, split it down the center and no, it's perfectly fine inside. Um, and the damaged area on the surface is only in about an eighth of an inch or so. You peel that off and that was all usable too. Delicious squash. I, I did roast it. Um, and uh, then I scooped it all out of the shell and I have it in a large bowl in the refrigerator warming some up for in the microwave for meals every day. But if we're going to be getting some damp weather now, a great amount of rain predicted, but um, I want the uh, uh, Hokkaidos and the North Georgias to continue hardening off. I'm going to move them inside of the cabin until this damp weather is over. Even with all the dry weather, there's been a wonderful crop of the wild blackberries, um, as big as any cultivated ones, most of them. There seem to be several varieties. There's a variety that's quite a bit smaller, 
and uh, the smaller ones seemed to be much sweeter. Anyway, with, in no time flat, less than an hour, I, I picked uh, two quarts, enough to make a, a batch of uh, blackberry jam. I think it made, uh, yeah, I made four pint jars, four 500 milliliter jars out of, out of two quarts. And the way they ripen is a few more every day type thing, so it's been going on for a long time. I should invite neighbors in to pick them, I guess, because I've really had all I want. I pick a few to have on cereal and something. The, the rest of them, I guess, the birds will probably get. But they're everywhere on my property. It's been a great year for them. I, usually I have to pick some on my property and then go out on the little wood roads and stuff and pick more. But I have all that I need this year on my own property. A good amount of Asian pears on my little uh, grafted Asian pear tree. Four varieties on the same tree. They're not huge. I'm assuming again that that's because the uh, tree isn't huge. I think they're bigger than they were last year, I think. I've had one already. They're still quite firm, but they're, they, always, they tend to be quite firm anyway. They're a, a crisp fruit, more like an apple than a pear. Let me show you some that, uh, if I can find one to pick here, that's, here's one. One of the varieties has ended up very <laughs> diseased, and not all of them. Um, on that same stem, that particular graft, there's some good fruit, but there's like five or six like this, most of which have already fallen off, so something to do with the hot, dry summer, or don't ask me, some kind of a virus or something has attacked it. The tree itself is very healthy, and I'll have to prune it for the first time. I think I'll wait until it's dormant. It's got some sucker growth that's coming straight up out of some of the horizontal branches. I'll be pruning that off. But healthy looking tree with a lot of nice fruit on it. I haven't counted, but there, oh, there has to be 25 or 30 anyway pears. I didn't really thin them out very much this year. I just let them grow. I'm having a very strange year with all three of the varieties of beans that I'm trying to grow. Very healthy looking plants, at least these ones are. These are the mooch um, heirloom open pollinated type of bean. Very tasty. I like them very much. They have sort of a mottled purplish green um, bean, pod anyway. They didn't start to bloom until the 1st of September. I don't know. I didn't think I planted them all that much later. And I've tried to keep them watered, and as you can see, the plants look very healthy, but just starting to get some beans on. There's a few now that are five or six inches long, but the, the blossoming is just getting started in September for some reason this year. In the hoop house where I was growing the yard-long beans, it has never been a flower at all, and now they're starting to look kind of yellow, like they're declining without ever blooming. So I won't be attempting yard-long beans here again. I might give you a look at the butter beans and get over where they're at. Also, they're, they've been starting to bloom for quite a while now, and there are quite a number of pods, but the pods aren't filling out yet. So, day is getting shorter and they're getting cooler, so hopefully I'll get some butter beans out of it somehow. This is an experiment with the uh, compost or soil, whatever you want to call it, that's left over from the potatoes. As I harvest my potatoes, I'm putting it back in these large containers. And uh, Two of these have uh, radish in and two have the white Japanese uh, turnip, which I have a lot of problems growing because they always get some kind of a little worm in them. I'm assuming that some kind of a bug lays its egg on the surface and uh, then the it, you know egg hatches and the worm goes inside the the turnip and destroys it. So I'm, draw, I'm growing uh, the turnips and one of uh, two pots of turnips and one of radish under row cover and the fourth one is just radish. So I've left it outside because I never had a problem with radish. But as you can see I need to do some serious thinning and I'm going to have to raise that row cover up a bit because it's touching the surface of the of the uh, plants that are growing underneath. So hopefully before the end of the month sometime I'll at least get a few radishes and maybe have some turnips without worms in them. Those are the butter beans with a lot of yellow or I guess mostly white actually, white blossoms and you can see some of the pods there. I haven't found a single pod yet that has 
filled out. So I don't really never grown them before. Whether they wait until they've set all their pods before they start to fill out or whatever, I don't know. I put you see those bamboo canes. I thought they needed some support, and I had a lot of little I don't know four foot canes or whatever. So I stuck them in the soil in there, but they don't have any tendrils. So there's nothing for them to hold on to anything with. So they just sort of support each other and. They haven't been falling over or anything, so so far so good. I had a request to show the carrots when they were in bloom, and they are certainly in bloom now. There's three carrots. Uh, I don't know what the variety is. They're in that uh, package of mixed seeds with various colors of carrots. And my original thought was, oh, that's great, I'll save some seed. And then I got thinking about it, why would I want to do that? These are, I wouldn't want seed of saved or something that uh, bolts and, and goes to seed in its first year. So as soon as I finish this little clip, I'm pulling the three of those out before they get a chance to throw their seeds around the garden. Well, in my last update from in here in the hoop house, I showed this same oka melon. And I said that I couldn't see any tendrils next to it, so how was I going to know when it was ripe? Because tendrils, uh, closest one to a melon, dries up and when, the, when the melon is ripe. And I got several nice comments, people telling me other methods. And then I discovered this thing does have a tendril. It was hanging over the side of the bed there, and I was afraid that it would be pulled off the vine, so I put it up in the bed and rested it on a plastic bag. It's done quite a bit of growing since then. I don't think it's going to grow anymore because it's now starting to turn beige. But if I can show it or not, that's the way down in here. See it or not, get my arms in the way I suppose. But there is the tendril there if that, if that is showing up on the camera or not. So when that tendril dries up, that means it's ripe. One of the true ways of telling, I guess. And I don't think it's going to be too much longer. Next couple of weeks, maybe I'll get to tasting an oka melon. I've planted a fall brassica crop inside the hoop house. They don't do well in the heat, but as soon as it starts to cool down, which is, it's doing now, we're down to you know, a few nights this week, it's been down to 12 degrees. Uh, they seem to like the hoop house temperature then, as long as it's cool at night. So they, they are growing quite nicely. You can't probably make it. It's three rows. I think the back row and the front row are both broccoli. I hope they are. I hope I didn't waste any time growing any of that fancy cauliflower, which is a, a useless plant. And in the center is about four, maybe five of the uh, red cabbage. So they should grow in here right through until well, November, I would think, anyway, sometime. So. Hopefully we'll get a fall crop out of this. There's the grapes with a, an extension cord hanging down in front of them that runs the, the fan that's over a, a vent on the back wall there. I didn't prune the grapes again after this spring when they had their hard spring pruning because I really didn't have much use for them this year. I still have jam left from last year, but they are ripening nicely. There's quite a few clusters. Um, I tasted them and after you eat the first couple they taste a little sweeter but they're still quite tart so I think it'll be close to the end of no end of September before they're ready to eat as a dessert grape. Lots of peppers starting to ripen those are espalettes and I have uh, three maybe four three plants anyway of the espalette and I know I've got at least one that has some heat they're strange. Some plants are very mild and some have a bit of heat, so I'm going to be tasting them all this year before I save seed because I'd like to select the ones that have a little bit of heat. I like that better. I just did a bit of a harvest. The uh, clump of carrots off to the left, I don't remember the exact brand name, variety name, but they are obviously white carrot. The ones off to the right are from the package of uh, mixed colored carrots and there's quite a number of white ones mixed in with that as well and in the center there is a handful of Jimmy Nardello peppers they're all ripening nicely and I really like them Kevin they're a nice pepper to look at you'd think it might be a hot pepper but it's a nice sweet pepper my issue with the white carrots and I don't think I've ever had this problem before I can get zoomed in there for you with any, well, any of the carrots. I've never grown white ones before, I don't mean that, but if you see the green tops on them, 
Um, they grew with about two inches of them sticking up out of the soil. And any carrots, including the, the ones off to the right that I've ever grown before, the top of the carrot stays down below the soil so it doesn't sunburn like that. I've been eating these white carrots and they're delicious, but I have to cut off an inch and a half, two inches of green carrot and, and waste it and, and uh, eat the white part. Very tasty carrot. Um, probably you can see also there's some branching, there's ones that have double roots and whatever. Just means that there was too much compost in the bed where I planted them. They don't like, carrots don't like a rich compost soil. They taste just as good no matter how many roots they've got on them. Well, to close this week's video off, I'll show you the last of the potato harvest out of the area where I was growing them under sawdust. I like the way they grew. Uh, decent size. These are called roco, or red skinned potato as you can see, and they're supposed to be a good storage potato. And these are Nicola. I really like those. They're a pale yellow flesh, but they're a very nice potato. And way down deep under um, is the few of the Linzer delicatesse that were left in the patch. But what is maddening is I threw that many away, at least. Destroyed like this by moles bring up a nice big red potato and the only thing's left is the shell. So I guess I'll be back to growing them just in containers next year. I can't compete with the moles. It's very disappointing. These will be enjoyed and they'll last me quite a while. That's a heavy basket. Oh, uh, I don't know. Between 15 and 20 pounds I would say it's a, it's a good amount of, of potatoes. Unfortunately it's only half of them. But I will enjoy these and they'll last me for quite a while. Well, that will close this video off for this week. I'll get this up on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching.